Severe weather will be returning to the United States as we go into next week as two different large storms will likely be impacting the country, bringing the potential for damaging winds, hails, and perhaps even some tornadoes. In addition to that, the remnants of Francine will continue to bring some more heavy rainfall and another low-end threat for tornadoes today in the southeast, and the tropics are continuing to look very active as we have three other areas out in the Atlantic Ocean that could develop into tropical storms or even hurricanes over the next seven days. In today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather across the United States over the next seven days. We are going to begin with what's happening across the United States this morning, which overall, it's not too shabby out there. We do have the remnants of Francine currently sitting over uh, really Tennessee and Missouri. This is where the bulk of the rain continues to fall. Some gusty winds as well. Unfortunately, a lot of this moisture that's lifting to the north is not going to make it much farther to the north. Areas like Ohio are going to be skipped out on the majority of of the rain that's going to continue to fall with the remnants of Francine for the rest of today. But one area that we are going to have to watch for later today is back over here in Alabama, Georgia, and maybe even very far northern Florida for another conditional tornado risk later today. Yesterday's tornado threat really did not pan out at all. We thought there might be a few tornadoes, maybe even a small scale tornado outbreak. None of that ended up happening yesterday, but I would not rule out a couple of tornadoes today. If that does happen, they'll be on the briefer side of things. But good news, this has not been anything compared to a barrel when it comes to the tornado threat. Barrel produced 100, over 100 tornadoes, and this particular event did not produce really anything in terms of tornadoes, which is very good news there. Back up in the northern plains, we also have a low pressure system up here. This has brought some severe weather to areas like Montana and North and South Dakota, but overall nothing too crazy up that direction, but I think as we go into next week, we could get a bit more of legitimate shots for severe weather, including all modes of severe weather, which we're going to talk more about here in just a moment. I do want to briefly talk about the tornado threat today in the southeast. It should be a relatively low threat. The tornado parameter values are remaining very low today. All those grays basically indicating a very low chance of tornadic activity this afternoon. The main corridor will be up and down Alabama, anywhere from really Florida all the way back through about northern Alabama, maybe very far southern Tennessee for an isolated tornado or two. But overall, the risk should be pretty low, and it's not really going to be too much of a concern today, in my opinion. Here's what we're looking at on the future radar. So notice showers and thunderstorms throughout the morning. We're going to be watching Watching near the coast of Florida for a little bit better of a shot for maybe a couple of water spouts, which could eventually lead to maybe a tornado or two, similar to what we saw yesterday morning. And then as we go into the afternoon hours, storms start to fire up in Alabama and even far western Georgia. Any of these storms that move south to north that are able to get a bit more matured and stay discreet could produce a tornado or two, but again, not looking too concerning. More than anything, we're going to be talking about more of a rain threat. And then as we go into Saturday, another shot for some showers and thunderstorms, but overall severe weather is not expected right now on Saturday. Here's what we're looking at in terms of total rainfall accumulation between now all the way through uh, late Saturday. Many areas in Alabama and even back up into Tennessee and northeast Mississippi will pick up anywhere from one to three inches of rainfall. Some isolated spots, maybe up to five inches of rain, and even parts of western Florida could pick up on a few areas, picking up isolated amounts up to five inches of rainfall. Across the Atlantic Ocean, we do currently have three areas that we are watching for for either development or something that's ongoing. Beginning with the furthest east system, we do have Tropical Depression 7, which is expected to become Tropical Storm Gordon Ramsay. No, not actually Gordon Ramsay, but Tropical Storm Gordon uh, within the next day or two as this continues to track west. Eventually, it is expected to lift to the north, but there's still a chance that it could keep going west, so we're going to talk more about the possibilities of that here in a second. Also, we have one little area of development in the Lesser Antilles. I'm going to be honest, this is like one of the smallest areas of development I've ever seen that is moving to the west. Does not look very concerning, in my opinion. And then back over here off the Carolina Carolina coastline, we could see some sort of brief tropical depression or storm develop as we go into the late weekend or early next week. Now, this is the latest here on Tropical Depression 7. As of right now, it is moving to the west. It is expected to become a tropical storm sometime today. It was actually expected to become one yesterday, but didn't. As it moves to the west, it will continue to move west as we go into the weekend. And by early next week, the question will remain, does it continue its track to the west or even west-southwest, or does it turn off to the north? Well, I think either way, way, this is probably not going to be very impressive of a tropical system. I think it's probably going to weaken due to dry air and some wind shear. However, we could see this if it does go west, become a little bit more of a concern. So we'll be watching it closely. As of right now, though, no imminent concern to land or the United States. Now, the weather pattern is going to change quite a bit as we go into next week. And one of the biggest reasons why is because we are going to start to see the return of some relatively large storms across parts of the western tier of the country. And this is the 
the jet stream, by the way, which gives us an idea of the weather patterns that are going to be happening across the United States. This is by Monday of next week. A impressive trough will move into the country as we go into the beginning of next week. As this continues its track to the east, it is going to eventually move over the Rocky Mountains. And notice this tilt that it gets. This is going to be what we call a negatively tilted trough. And usually what these do is bring a lot more moisture to the north with a strong southerly wind. And we also, in a lot of cases, see more elevated chances for severe weather, depending on the circumstances of the ingredients available. In my opinion, I do think Tuesday of next week will be one of the days to watch for for some severe weather. Wednesday could also bring severe weather in the far northern plains as that trough continues to move north. But we are eventually going to see by Thursday into Friday, more than likely a secondary trough come from behind this. And what that could do is bring another round of severe storms to parts of the central and northern plains and perhaps the Midwest as we go later into the week and into the weekend. But again, that is still about seven days out, so we don't exactly know what's going to happen there. All I'm going to say, though, is I do think severe weather is on the return and our second severe weather season is going to kick off here as we go into next week. And again, we're in mid to late September now. This is when we start to see that second severe weather season come along. Now, granted, the second severe weather season is not as bad as the one we have in the spring, but it still does bring some impactful severe weather. So something to watch for usually begins around this time of the year and then it rolls through about December um, across the Great Plains. Here's what we're looking at on the future radar for the next few days. So again, showers and storms will continue in the southeast throughout the weekend. It's going to be a bit of a messy one, in my opinion. As we go into next week, things will still stay relatively active in the southeast and then back over in the Great Plains on Tuesday would be the day to watch for, I think, for some severe weather, especially back up in Nebraska, North and South Dakota. And then as we go into Wednesday afternoon and evening, we could see some of that severe weather maybe leak here into like, you know, Minnesota. But again, that might be a little bit more of a tough challenge as the overall low pressure system will be a bit further off to the northwest. Not nearly looking as favorable for Wednesday. By Thursday, another round for severe weather will be possible in the central and northern plains. I think Friday might be a bit more of a better shot for maybe some sort of uh, severe weather event. Again, perhaps back over in the central and northern plains and maybe the far western Midwest. And then as we go into Saturday and Sunday, things become more uncertain. But I do think that active weather pattern will continue to stay across much of the Great Plains and maybe even the Midwest. The temperature trend over the next several days is going to continue to stay relatively the same as warm air will build as we go into the weekend across the Great Plains and the Midwest with well above average temperatures in the forecast. And as we start to see the storm systems move into the western tier of the country, that will bring cooler than average weather across the southwest and the west coast. And as we go into the middle and end of the week, that trend is just going to continue. Warm air will build up across a large chunk of the Great Plains and as well as back through the Ohio Valley. And then that uh, heat will really build even up in Canada. Cold air will continue west of the Rocky Mountains, and that'll kind of basically stay the same probably until the middle or even end of September. Now our forecast essentially agrees with the Climate Prediction Center's latest forecast as below average temperatures are expected in the southwest as we go into next week. This is something we've not seen in quite a while, especially back down in Arizona, Nevada, and even back into California. The rest of the country, though, above average temperatures, even a little bit of a heat wave expected as we go into next week. Temperatures will be on the rise as we go into next week across much of the country. And then overall precipitation in form of the rain is expected to continue to be above average back up in the northern and central plains as we are going to see the potential for severe weather rise. Even in the Pacific Northwest and West Coast, we'll see more rainfall. And back over on the East Coast and the Southeast, we're expecting some additional rainfall, especially since a tropical system may try to crash into the Carolina coastline as we go into next week. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.